Hey there. In my last video, I looked back at a hydro corridor spanning the edge of Lake Ontario along the beach spit north of Hamilton. For my recent expansion of Metroscape's coverage into the greater Toronto area, I hiked along another one. Let's look at a major utility corridor spanning central Mississauga. Hey, it's Trev. Today I'll be going over a February 2024 walk I did along a hydro corridor in Mississauga, Ontario. If the term hydro corridor is confusing, go check out my beach hydro video for a short explainer. But I really should ditch the phrase hydro corridor for this walk, because it's really underselling what this strip of land does. Let's set this walk up. Let's start with the hydro system. There are two major transformer stations that bookend the broader corridor, just outside of Mississauga's borders. One by the Highway 401 and 427 interchange, and one by the 403 and 407 interchange. There's also a branch corridor that splits off to connect with more of the system in South Mississauga. On top of that, this corridor is home to multiple liquid and gas pipelines, Highway 403, and the Mississauga Transit Way. So I started near where the branch corridor crosses into Mississauga, from near the West Mall and Queensway. It comes over Etobicoke Creek from a junkyard on the south bank. So I dove down into the valley to get a look, and then clambered back out along these makeshift steps. The corridor straightens itself out and heads north from Mattawa Avenue. There's a little playground there in the corridor, next to Karam Crescent. And past that, you get to Dundas Street. From this point onwards, there's a formal trail, and this is relatively new. The city of Mississauga finished a cycling master plan in 2018, and this included a series of off-road multi-use trails that they wanted to put in, and this was one of them. They completed it in 2022, a little later than expected, because some nearby residents got really worked up about which side of the corridor that the trail was on. Nonetheless, it got finished, and now it's great, even on a cold, windy winter day. This section is flanked to the east by industrial land, and to the west by a trailer park, which I don't think is very commonplace in the GTA, but I could be wrong. I also managed to see a couple Enbridge signs along the way to tell you that this is a pipeline corridor, which isn't totally uncommon along major hydro corridors. Eventually, the trailer park and industrial land give way to houses and apartment blocks. The corridor intersects another trail that's set down in a depression. This suspiciously looked like Buried Creek to me. Sure enough, after looking into it further, I confirmed that this is part of Armour Creek, and it pops out to the surface 200 meters to the east. You rise out of this old creek valley, and the office complexes along Angleton Avenue start coming into view. After using a formal trail for three kilometers, it comes to an end at Audubon Boulevard, where you meet the east-west corridor. I went east for a little bit, alongside some meadows, just to get a look over Etobicoke Creek. It was only 500 meters away. You could see lots of people using the Creekside Trail, but it was on the east side, so if you want to get there, you gotta go about 700 meters north or south, either via Eglinton or a trail connection off of Rathburn. It was a nice lookout nonetheless. From here, I started backtracking westwards, past the hydro junction. There were a few low-hanging lines here, so I kind of ducked and crouched down as best as I could. At this point, I should address the fact that this is a large and wide corridor, even for three sets of towers. That's because, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is more than a hydro corridor. It's a full-on utility corridor. It also has three to four pipelines carrying oil and refined fuels. You'll see valves and compression stations along the way to kind of indicate that these are here. A couple of these pipelines span across southern Ontario, and a couple go across the whole continent. As you get to Eastgate Parkway, something new joins the mix. A busway. This is the Mississauga Transit Way, a bus-only road. This was built by Metrolinx, the agency charged with building rapid transit in the Greater Toronto Area. 
It was opened in phases between 2014 and 2017. This is part of the eastern portion, and as you can see, it's fully grade separated. Local Mississauga, or My Way buses, as well as regional GO Transit buses, can fly through here without being bothered by traffic or traffic lights. Continuing along the corridor gave me lots of glimpses of the transit way, including the stations at Dixie, Tompkin, and Cawthra. They're all pretty much the same, with the key difference being whether they're below or above grade. The corridor beside it is pretty scrubby, and it's also low-lying, so there's wetlands throughout it too. I almost soaked my feet at one point. I thought I was walking on solid ground, but it turned out to be a wetland with standing water. After Dixie, I ended up jumping into the road instead of continuing along the corridor, because that stretch intersects a tributary of Etobicoke Creek, and I wasn't confident I'd find a way over. At Tompkin, I took a break and went up to the platform. It gives you a good view over the corridor. After that, I hopped back in the corridor through to Cawthra, and the transitway starts coming back down to grade. You actually meet this weird highway interchange where Highway 403 bends 90 degrees, and so the on and off ramps are actually two legs of a four-way intersection. This is also a point where the corridor crosses the 403, and the transitway goes under the highway ramps, and wedges itself along the south side. Despite this, there's no direct connection for pedestrians or cyclists to the next transit way station. So after a brief detour, you get to Central Parkway. The transit way is now south of the highway, and you're getting close to Mississauga City Center. I missed the short piece of the corridor east of Central Parkway, but I'll cover it during another hydro corridor walk in the future. Anyway, this stretch is wedged between the 403 and residential areas, making it a prime candidate for parkland. And you start to get into some serious density as you approach here, Ontario. The light rail transit, or LRT, along here, Ontario, is still under construction, so it was a mess getting across there. On the other side, you can see the big bridge to the city center, which also crosses Cooksville Creek. That creek also intersects the hydro corridor. But there's already a culvert there, so it was easy to get across. There's a trail along its west bank as well, providing a direct connection to Kingsbridge Common and Eglinton Avenue. You'll also notice there's a bit of a road there. Hydro One is in the middle of doing some work along this corridor. And because of that, I wasn't able to capture the next segment. It was fenced off, and I had to heed the danger signs that were posted. I got back into the corridor at Mavis Road. And this stretch is really curious. It's two whole kilometers to the next crossroad, and it widens out midway to make room for a transformer station. Now transformer stations, and the low lines around them, are not a place to play. So if this ever got made into a formal public use, a lot of it would need to be fenced off. There'd still be a good chunk of extra space left over, particularly around Clover Meadows Park. There's a great connection opportunity at Rath Keel, and then you start making your way down the hill towards Credit View. Now unfortunately that name is a little misleading, because you don't actually get a view of the Credit River west of here. And the main reason for that is there's a rail line in the way. You can clearly see people do cross it all the time, but this is dangerous. It's not a slow speed industrial spur. This is Canadian Pacific's GALT subdivision and other folks might know it as the GO Transit Milton Line. Trains can go flying through here up to 80 kilometers an hour. And remember, these aren't machines that stop on a dime either, so I certainly didn't cross the tracks. I can't condone that at all. But let me pause here to highlight why this would be a better connection in the future. We're in a segment where the Mississauga Transit Way isn't actually a dedicated busway. Buses just hop onto the 403, and if they need to, they'll use the shoulders if traffic's all jammed up. Designing it this way was a great way to save money, but it also means there's a lot of looping to do at Aaron Mills Parkway. If you extend the transit way over the Credit River and under these tracks, it's a great opportunity to also fit in a multi-use trail. This would eliminate a huge barrier to pedestrians and cyclists to get across the river, north to Henwick Meadows, south to the Riverwood Conservancy, and to a bunch of other adjacent neighborhoods and trails. 
Is a huge bridge and underpass worth it to save a couple minutes on the bus? Maybe not by itself. Adding in this pedestrian connection will get you closer. So should the fact that the transitway was supposed to be greater than what it is today. Original plans for the transitway would have put stations at Mavis Road and the rail line. Completing this original vision, and maybe just making a connection to Arendale Go instead of replacing it, could have major benefits for the My Way bus system and regional travel in general. I also think it's a huge fault in a lot of large infrastructure projects that we don't design them with all these co-benefits in mind. Anyway, huge tangent. I had to make a huge detour after the tracks, all the way up to Eglinton Avenue, before I could get under the tracks and over the Credit River. There's actually a small segment of the corridor that's accessible from Wellsboro Place, but again, I'd be stuck on the east bank of the Credit and I need to find a way around adding even more distance to my already long walk. So I ended up skipping ahead to a path along Mullet Creek, a tributary of the credit that meets the river a couple kilometers downstream. This brings you over the creek and back into the corridor. After zigzagging through some brush, you come to this really nice high point that gives you a great view of Mississauga City Center. At this point, you gotta get across Aaron Mills Parkway, and that's difficult within itself. I got trapped on Haydock Park Drive because there's a fence there. I ended up having to go all the way up to Credit Valley Road just to get across, once again adding unnecessary distance to my walk. After that I finally got down to Aaron Mills Transitway Station. This is the west section of the transitway. It actually becomes a dedicated busway again. There's a formal trail connecting the station to Glen Aaron west of here, though one connection to Ida Wild Crescent is closed off. Residents there convinced Mississauga City Council to close that connection, fearing that people would park on their street and walk to the station. And part of me wonders if the fence at Haydock Park Drive was put in for the same reason. But I don't think the parking lot at Aaron Mills Station has ever gotten very full. So these fears seem super overblown, and they just create walking barriers. After Glen Eden, it's a short little jaunt through more scrubby meadow. You'll notice the transitway does this funky leap over the 403's westbound ramps, and then under Winston Churchill Boulevard. At this point, you arrive at Winston Churchill Station, the west terminus of the transitway. The utility corridor keeps going past here, all the way to the 407, but at this point I was so exhausted, I had no more left in the tank. So I called it a day here. So yeah, that was my walk. It's a huge opportunity for active transportation in Mississauga. Unfortunately, it's an opportunity that's been recognized and put on the books. Hopefully it's built sooner than later. Especially the missing connections over the railway and the Credit River. These have immense potential to connect people and parks. That's it for today's video. Thanks for joining me as I explore where natural and built environments collide. And remember friends, not all those who wander are lost. Take care.